The stalking, menacing, unstoppable killing machine at the heart of these tales is everyone's nightmare. Footsteps approaching from the dark. A shadow suddenly whips by. Then you see it. The glint of light reflecting off the blade. It's too late. You're dead meat. Whether through supernatural forces or just plain psychosis, this idea of a slasher villain is based in real-world traumatic events, inspiring an entire film genre and generation to fear those around us. Before we begin, please give this video a like, share, and subscribe to our channel. With that being said, here's our list of top 10 slasher flicks. Number 1, Friday the 13th, Part 4. The film that finally killed Jason Voorhees, at least his human form, and that introduced his longtime adversary, Tommy Jarvis. This film is memorable in multiple ways, to the gratuitous nudity, some of the meanest and bloodiest kills, and probably the best dance scene since the flash dance. But what ties it all together is the aforementioned Tommy Jarvis, played endearingly by Corey Feldman. He's almost immediately likable, even if he is a precocious little smarty pants, and his family is just as lovely. To see him then later on gather all his courage and wit and outsmart Jason, distract him long enough for his sister to get away, and then rain down a machete ass whooping at the final climax was something that shocked fans and made them cheer for his victory. Sadly, even though Tommy appears in two more sequels, he never quite lived up to this moment and thus faded into obscurity for the remaining installments. However, Two fan-made films brought him back, Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow, which you can find on YouTube by Womp Stomp Films. Number 2, Halloween. While not the first slasher in existence, it did usher in the popularity of the genre, and so it well deserves the title of Slasher King. Everything about this film feels almost voyeuristic as if we spend a majority of the narrative also stalking Lori. We don't always need to be in the killer's perspective, which is what makes it so eerie. And the moments when Michael is actually on screen, his ghostly, silent, menacing hunt after the various victims he claims earns him every syllable of the word boogeyman. Shot on a meager film budget of around 300000 it's amazing how it forced the crew to be as creative as possible to make such an impression on the horror genre altogether. What's even crazier is that there's actually a lot less blood in the film than people remember. Most of the kills are completely bloodless, just like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, another film remembered for being ultra-violent even though most of the violence was off-screen. Number 3. Scream Another film heralded as the king of a subgenre, this time of meta films, even though it wasn't the first. What makes the original Scream so great compared to most parodies is that it takes itself more seriously than you'd originally think. The film does mock the formulas established throughout slasher flicks, but it also tells a harrowing and sinister horror story at its core. The humor meta subtext is just that an underlying layer and not the main focus. This is something that almost every single sequel apart from Scream 4 was missing. Wes Craven had perfected his formula of meta storytelling with two previous attempts, most notably A New Nightmare, and the culmination of these efforts birthed one of the better horror films of the 90s. Great subversive storytelling, enough kills to satisfy the bloodlust of an audience, and a surprising twist that has kept people talking for years. It's a must-see if you're looking to fill your killer quota this Halloween season. Number 4. The Burning One of the earliest copycats in the post-Friday the 13th slasher landscape, it follows a basic premise of some teens at a summer camp get stalked and murdered in various ways by a masked killer. So why is it called The Burning? Glad you asked. Because the killer has a burned face. But if it's so mediocre, why is it on this list? Well, I'll tell you why. The kills. 
At this point, the studio was competing with Halloween and Friday the 13th, needed something that put it ahead of them. And while those films were violent, it was more about the tense and eerie atmosphere just as much as giving the audience shocking, sporadic moments of gore. So the burning took that one step further and let loose a killer with a giant pair of gardening shears. He doesn't just kill them either. He mutilates their bodies as well, like some sadistic autopsy. With a fiery ending, it sadly didn't fare well enough at the time to receive any sequels. But the legend of Cropsey still lives on. Number 5. Slumber Party Massacre Considered now to be a very pro-feminist film, the film has an interesting history to it. Dreamed up by a group of men who wanted basically an exploitative babysitter porno where all the girls get punished for being dirty sluts, and then helmed by a female director who twisted every frame into symbolism against the patriarchy. And you've got one of the most daring commentaries on toxic masculinity. Even the way the killer kills, using his big drill, the way the shots are framed, all speak on how frightening the male gaze and aggressive behavior just to penetrate their flesh can be on a young girl's mind. The sequels of course went more campy and devolved into a parody of itself. But the original is actually secretly genius if you're good at picking up context clues. Number 6. Sleepaway Camp If you don't know the twist of this film, leave right now. Hit pause, go watch, then come back. Because even though this film is decades old, it is what makes this movie so famous in the first place. Otherwise, this film is just another generic Friday the 13th copycat. A bunch of kids at a camp get murdered POV style by some maniac. Still here? Well, in the final moments of the film, the most unexpected reveal happens that literally no one saw coming. The killer was Angela, and she's actually a boy. While in today's climate, some have claimed this to be transphobic, I don't agree, as it isn't her being trans that made her into a killer, and more about the trauma she witnessed as a child, and the way her aunt raised and ma manipulated her, and so forth. The other great thing is, unlike some movies that have those twists that seem to come out of nowhere, upon rewatching, there are several hints that the boy survived and was dressed up to be his sister. The sequels just went off the rails with making Angela more over-the-top crazy. But the first one is almost perfect, even if it is just a formulaic slasher. Number 7. Child's Play A serial killer with the power to technically be immortal, forever continuing his reign of terror until the end of existence. There are several great things about this film that just subverted audience expectations when it came out and earned its place in pop culture horror history. First off, without Brad Dorif voicing the character of Chucky, it just wouldn't work. His whining, sniveling, scream cries just eat into your eardrums and trigger all your fight or flight responses. Secondly, unlike many of the other killers on this list, Chucky can die. Every time he's defeated at the end of the films, he does actually die. He is just reincarnated in a new body. Other slashers like Jason or Michael or Leatherface basically just have the god mode cheat on with bullet sponge turned up to max. So when they get blasted, blown up, and hacked apart, they just rest a while and heal up, ready to come back for round two. Lastly, it takes all the evil doll films and one ups them with one simple change. Chucky actually has a personality. He thinks, he makes jokes, he can be sincere, he actually has a full range of emotions even if he is a psychopath. Most horror movie dolls are just some empty vessel for some demon who just jump scares around and makes spooky things happen. Number 8. Dress to Kill Michael Caine is one of the most prestigious actors of all time. So would you believe me when I told you he starred in an 80s slasher film where he cross-dresses 
and kills other women he gets sexually frustrated with. Well, to be honest, if you also knew he was in Jaws 4 The Revenge, then this film should not be such a surprise. Unlike that film though, this one is actually really, really well done. Another film that now, in modern viewing eyes, has garnered some controversy, especially due to the cross-dressing nature of the killer themselves. It nonetheless boasts some genuinely great performances, creative kills, and some deep commentary on society, at least what it was like at the time. Number 9. Alice, Sweet Alice A slasher that predates Halloween the film revolves around a young girl named Alice who is suspected of the murder of her younger sister and several stabbings that follow. I don't want to spoil too much here, so I'll just say that it was tense, well acted, and has some interesting twists and turns along the way. It was definitely inspired by films like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, but also captured the late 70s, early 80s satanic panic in an interesting lens. Number 10. Pieces Ten-year-old Timmy gets abused by his mother for playing with a jigsaw puzzle of a nude woman, so he grabs an axe and hacks her to death, dismembering her corpse with a hacksaw afterward. When the police show up, he pretends to have witnessed a crime, and the police, of course, believe him and send him to live with his aunt. Forty years later, young women are murdered and pieces of their bodies go missing. There are a lot of suspects indicated throughout the film, but the final reveal, it's the Dean. But the movie doesn't end there. In fact, the most memorable scene in this film outside of the bastards moment happens when one of the characters finds out what happened to all the missing body parts. They have been stitched together like some crazy mannequin, and when Kendall knocks it over, it comes to life, grabbing his genitals and destroying them. W T. Thanks for checking out our video. What's your favorite slasher movie? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. You can reach out to us on Twitter or X at Studios Fat, or chat with us on Discord, linked below. I've been your host, Jamie. Keep vigilant and stay safe.